All can right. you see my screen? You can see your screen. Perfect. Um, all right. Is has everybody gotten back? If you haven't gotten back, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Welcome to the to the second talk uh, for today. Um, and um, Everton uh, Vieira, who's here at, at Rutgers, uh, postdoc at the Tripod Center, will be giving a talk on learning global dynamics from data. Okay. Go ahead. So thank you very much, Constantine, for organizing this uh, workshop. And today we'll talk about learning global dynamics from data and apply this to robotics. So the outline, it is, I will take this, uh, Acrobot, this is one of uh, famous uh, 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 control uh, that you have, uh, that you want to stabilize, that you want to, you have this double pendulum and then you want to get this double pendulum to, to stabilize uh, in a region that is, it is uh, without the control, it is not going to stabilize, so it's going to stand up. And um, yeah, starting with that, uh, we are going to, you take some data from this, whatever function that you are applying, whatever control that you are applying, uh, takes uh, data from this one and try to fit a, a surrogate model. Um, so because you have this data from, from the, the state space, uh, we need to construct the surrogate mod for the whole state space. And from there, we want to build uh, the techniques that we, uh, Marcio and Constantine Mars and Bill uh, talked uh, yesterday using the Morse graph and doing the topological data analysis here to, to understand the global dynamics uh, of these of this, let's say, unknown uh, dynamical system, okay? So this is uh, the outline. First, I will start with uh, uh, talking about the combinatorial dynamics, some definitions that I'm going to use. Then I will talk about the surrogate model. Here, I will talk about the Gaussian process specifically. Then how from the data to, to get the global dynamics, and then application to robotics. Okay. okay, so we start with a compact space and a discrete dynamical system. Uh, if you have a continuous dynamic system, you can use the time map of that continuous dynamic system. Uh, we are interested here in, uh, in understanding environment uh, sets. Uh, for the discrete dynamic system, it is the f of s equals s. And okay, so how to capture the, the dynamics from the data? Like how to capture those invariant sets? So for instance, if you have a, a collection of points here and you start to iterate that uh, like that. So you can see that uh, something here, it's possibly has this uh, federal structure-like and you are getting something here that uh, has a, an attractor uh, feature also here. So uh, how to capture this information, this global information just using the data. Um, so the approach that we are doing here is to consider a combinatorial representation of the dynamics to, to, to be able to capture those attractors and possibly the saddle here. Okay, so we start with putting a, since we have to do this discretization of the space, we start with a grid. Okay, so uh, basically uh, in 2D is going to be like squares here. So every squares here is going to be the top dimension uh, cells of this, of this compact space that we are working with. And then from this grid, we are going to define a multi value map from each top uh, dimension cells here. So each element of the grid, okay, we are going to define this uh, multi value map. And for this multi value map, 
we are interested in to capture the dynamics. If we, if this grid, with this much much uh, value map, you you have this feature that when you apply f of uh, element of the grid, then you are going to be in an interior of the of the f of psi. So basically, here I have a uh, this uh, square here. So this is the top dimensional cell here. Then apply f. Uh, you are going to get this uh, the image of this square here. You're going to get this, and then you want that this is it is in the interior of the multi-value map that you are going to define. Okay. Uh, then then you are going to pick those. This side here is going to be mapped to all these boxes here. Okay. So one thing that also we are interested in, uh, we also need to, most of the case, we need to put some bounds here, uh, like use a interval arithmetic uh, to, to get a rigorous uh, uh, theorem. So I mean, putting here, usually you put this, uh, this ball, epsilon ball here, I'm considered just a, a neighborhood of this because when we, con we, when we construct the, using the Gaussian process, the, is not going to be just this, uh, this epsilon ball distance of, of the epsilon ball neighborhood of the image of F psi. Okay, okay. okay. so, also, you have this uh, multi-value map. For instance, here I have this uh, toy example that I have a tractor here, a tractor here, and possibly a saddle here. Uh, also, you have this uh, multi-value map. So each point here of the this grid is a vertex. You are just putting. It's going to be a lot of vertex, so I just put some some vertex here, and. Uh, in this case here, this is just a toy example where you have a uh, this, for instance, this vertex here. You have a uh, this is mapping to itself. Uh, this uh, red stuff here, uh, it is mapping to itself, and you might have something here, uh, recurrence here happening that is mapped to itself. So in that case, it is interesting to find the strongly connected components of F because those are is those is going to give us the, the recurrence uh, that is happening uh, here in your multi-value map, okay? Um, then you can consider the pulse set of this, of the strong connect component F, okay? So you consider this pulse set and uh, you have this huge pulse set like, uh, is going to be only is going to be the those vertex here plus the the strongly connected components uh, that can it might have more than one so uh, since we are interested in the recurrence like this vertex here you don't have recurrence here so we are going to consider the more Morse per set it is basically the the pulse set that is defined before there is is going to be the sub pulse set of this direct acyclic graph, this pulse set, uh, where you have at least one edge. So we have this uh, black, red, and uh, blue structure here. This is going to be our Mars per set, per set. Okay, so we are not interested in those vertex here. So basically we are decreasing the amount of information that we have to track. And we can define the Mars graph uh, as the has uh, diagram of this Morse per set. So from this one, we we can get the the Morse graph. Okay, and I will work with this Morse graph here. <laughs> okay, so let's see some example. Here we have this uh, ODE here, and here is the uh, state space of this ODE here, and we can use the <clears throat> we can use the, the tool that the Marshall uh, showed us, uh, the Colin Morse graph database, that algorithm, uh, where we can basically, we can, from this one, we can find this 
uh, using a grid with uh, two to the power of 18 cubes. It's basically 18 subdivisions here of your uh, state space. And you here you find the recurrence, and then here you get the Morse graph for this uh, for this the multi-value map that is defined here in this uh, uh, this grid. So you can see here uh, we 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 are able to see some saddles, uh, attractors like zero. This one is this attractor here. Uh, this one is this attractor. This one this one here. Uh, you can also you can see the the call index also here I'm computed the call index uh, um, uh, here like for instance uh, here the attractors have the call index of an attractor uh, call index of the saddle so you if you compare those two dynamics here you are getting the uh, you are getting the rigorous uh, dynamics uh, representation of this of these dynamics here okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, it is we have this uh, flow here, but suppose that we do not know this flow. We are going just to have a sample of that flow. Okay, uh, so uh, how to get the, the global dynamics only have a sample. Okay, for that, first we, I, I need to talk about the Gaussian process. Uh, because we, we need to put a surrogate model coming from the data. So let's talk a, a little bit about the Gaussian process here. So uh, denote this N as the multivariate uh, Gaussian distribution with the mean mu and covariance matrix sigma. Okay, so here is an example of a multivariate uh, normal distribution. Uh, Gaussian process, it is a collection of uh, random variables uh, where any finite uh, subcollections has a Gaussian distribution. Okay, so we have these random uh, variables uh, where when you take this uh, any finite uh, subcollection, you have this uh, Gaussian distribution. Okay, uh, and this Gaussian uh, process is entirely uh, characterized by the mean. Okay, so you take value of these uh, random variables and the covariant function uh, given by this formula here. So you you can uh, you have this the Gaussian process and the mean and the covariant function here. And let's denote this by uh, let's denote the Gaussian process by this. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> Now that we have this Gaussian process, uh, we need to find the, the mean and the covariance, uh, the related structures. For that, we, we consider the, you have to have this uh, training data. Uh, for this training data, uh, uh, for instance, here, you, you have those points here that is going in red here. Uh, that is going to be your, your training data. Uh, then for this, this training data, you, you can have a, a predict uh, distribution of the outputs given the inputs uh, X star here. So you have the, the probability is going to be of the output uh, is going to have the distribution of this uh, multivariate uh, Gaussian, Gaussian process uh, distribution where the mean of this uh, predictive distribution is going to give by this formula here. And the, and the sigma, the covariance uh, matrix is going to give by this formula here, where uh, here you have to specify a kernel for to, to get the, this mean and this uh, covariance matrix, okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, this now you have to select a kernel. Uh, here in this picture, I have select this radio basis function. Basically, uh, if you are if you are close to the, you take two points. And if the, those two points are close enough, they are 
the the core uh, variation is going to be the core correlation between those points is going to be higher than uh, if you go if you have points that are far then the correlation is going to be low. Basically, you see this from this picture. Uh, here you have this uh, the prior. You start with a mean, then you then you you start this the mean, and then you you are going. Uh, it's better to explain this first. Okay, so you have this uh, this uh, kernel, and then you have two parameters D here. So you want to maximize the marginal likelihood of the, your output, okay? The prob probability of your output given the the those parameters, okay? So uh, here, if you start with that, uh, here you have the parameter uh, one for the sigma and for the lambda one also. You have this, but uh, after you use the data uh you here you have this the using the uh op optimization uh for these high parameters you you get this 0 0.5 for the for the sigma and the uh, lambda is going to be 0 0.2.7 so basically here you you maximize maximize your those uh uh high parameters. And then uh, when you do that, you using this, this kernel, you can see that feature happening that uh, when you are far from the, from the, the training data, uh, the confidence, confidence interval, it is start, it is, it is going to be higher because here you have a uh, uncertainty. Okay, so it's the uncertainty start to increase when you are far from the data. Okay, so this is basically capturing by this kernel. Okay, it is possible also to change the kernel. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, kernels that you can put here. So it's uh, the prediction is going to depend is going to depends on the the, the the type of kernel that you are using. Here I'm using another one, Matter, uh, and then. This is the this is the prediction given by the, the Gaussian process. Okay, so uh, using the same data but different kernel. Uh, here I'm using so since it is a optimization problem, uh, you here I'm using the a skit learn that is uh, that is giving this these pictures here and giving this uh, optimization. If you use another technique. They are using the gradient uh, descent to find this, this, those high parameters. If you are using another, uh, another optimization procedure, you are going to find another uh, parameters here. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So now from this, now that I have those points, the from the data, I need to construct the the multi-value map. Okay, using this. All this information uh, given by the Gaussian process. Okay, so the first step uh, that we can do is use the prediction given by the Gaussian process. Okay, so the Gaussian, once you have the data points, uh, here is unidimensional, but I'm mean interested in high dimension, but it is easier to explain in one dimensional case. Okay, so when you have the points, uh, you, you had the prediction given by the Gaussian process. You can use that. You can use the, those are, the name of these, is, those fun functions here are posterior. So that is, that you are getting, getting from the Gaussian process. So you can use the, the pos posterior mean to use the, this as your map that you are going to use for, to define this, uh, this grid. So basically, if you think this f here, if you take the posterior mean, that is the this uh, this in in hard uh, bold uh, black here function, uh, you can think that as the this the f of this uh, take uh, the psi here, this cell here, and apply f. 
then you have this uh, the image of that. But you need to put some bounds because you need to increase the size of you because you have uncertainty, okay, uh, for that. And that's why I put you here because this uh, you you have uncertainty given by the by the interval uh, confidence interval here in one dimension, and also you you have you have to have some bounds on the derivative because for instance here the uh, confidence interval you might have some posterior that is escaping from the confidence interval from this data to here so it's it is important also to have some bounds on the the derivative okay so so the second step it is using the confidence interval if you are using one dimension if you are using a two dimension case you you have to consider uh, confidence ellipsoids and also you since you do, don't know uh, the underlying map so you have to you have to find this uh, this parameter l that is the high probability Lipschitz constant uh, of your underlying map. Uh, so you can have this bound on the derivative. So here, uh, one dimensional case, we uh, one of our colleagues, uh, collaborator here, he, uh, have a great idea to uh, how to define this multivalent map. Basically, I'm just going to give an idea because I, I want to also show the application to the robotics. But the overview idea here is uh, you have the the confidence interval uh, here. So you are going to fill the with the box so you can cover all the confidence. But you also need to consider this this bound of the of the derivative given by the those cons here that is given by this. Uh, Lipschitz constant that you this parameter that you are using, so you can uh, from this uh, from this uh, confidence interval to the next one, you can have this uh, guarantee that your your map the underlying map is going to be uh, inside here, so it's going to be uh, the much value map is going to be is going to be capturing the uh, the underlying uh, uh, map, uh, yeah. So there is going to is going to be inside here, but of course this is uh, with some probability. Okay, so there is uh, there is some uh, theorem that uh, uh, we are having the theorem that for with some high with some uh, probability we can build this such in such a way that the underlying map is going to be. Uh, is going to be uh, inside of uh, the uh, the graph of this the, the this underlying map is going to be inside of the of the uh, multivalent map. So all fixtures that we are capturing is going to is going to uh, yeah is going to be related to this uh, probability. Okay, for high dimension, uh, this is uh, we have this uh, work in progress. Because we need to use the the ellipsoids, uh, the conf confidence ellipsoids, and then there is going to be a, a correlation between the variables because now you have more than one. So it's we we are constructing that much uh, value map uh, for this high dimension. But for this this talk, I going to use only the prediction given by the Gaussian process. I'm not going to put this extra layer here. So basically, I what I'm going to present for you, because since I'm interested in, in high dimension case, for now, I don't have this, this, uh, this neighborhood you here uh, that I can guarantee that I can relate to a high pro uh, probability. So, but, uh, but I will convince you that even though just using the first step, we still can get something interest, interesting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the question is, 
now that we we can define this multi-value map, uh, we are we can relate to a probability. So the we this Mars graph that we are getting is going to relate this. Uh, there's going to be a relation between this Mars graph and this probability that is uh, coming from this. Uh, from the the, uh, the way that you are building your multi-value map. So of course, this is going to depend on the the surrogate model. Uh, here I'm using the Gaussian process, and the Gaussian process is, is using the you have to have a choice of kernel, like I did here for the this is the my my turn kernel. So this is going to be related to the choice of that. So basically, uh, what's happening? You are Let's call it here. You are solving the the, the dynamics for a particular uh, classes of functions because uh, what's happening with the Gaussian process when when you start to sampling more more you are approaching to the to underlying dynamics by these classes of uh, of uh, maps that is related to the kernel. Okay, so. If you start to sampling, you you start to decrease the the uncertainty, but you are decreasing that uh, following this. Uh, you are having a convergence in, uh, inside of the, this class of uh, uh, of functions. Okay. Okay. So let's. Okay. So now my goal it is to use just the first step, just the prediction given by the the Morse graph, and use. Oh, for the Gaussian process, and use that to show you that it's it it is actually for the example that we have is is doing a great job. Okay, so here again, let's come back to that uh, problem again uh, to that example. We are going to fix the grid again with uh, eighteen subdivisions, and here I have I'm going to use this as my true map, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to compare with the, putting some data and then I'm going to compare this with the, with the, let's say that this is our true map, map here. So for this much value map here. Uh, okay. Okay, so if we start like five points, uh, again here, I have five points. I fit a Gaussian, uh, use the Gaussian process, process to get a prediction, use, use the, this prediction to build the, the multi-value map. And from that multi-value map, I'm getting this. Like only use five points, I'm getting this one. That is, uh, I have this recurrence uh, set here, okay? And if I start adding points, I start getting something different. Uh, I add this point here. And then I, I get to recurrence here. And if I add more points, I'm getting this one. You start to see also here is computer the, the call index here. So here is already capturing something that is related to the uh, to the multi value map when you know the function. So you have this uh, saddle like structure here is capturing that one. So it's it's a few points you are already seeing something uh some convergence into the to this ground truth. Okay. So adding more points again uh you can see now you can see this attractor here and another attractor here. I forgot to mention that this also is attractor here that is going to be this one uh, eventually is going to converge to this one eventually. And yeah, you have a set of structure like here and another one here. So you can see that uh, you are getting the convergence. You are, every time there are pointy points, you, the Morse graph, uh, it is, uh, there is a relation between this Morse graph and that one. So far we, what we expect that this relation is uh, actually is given by the by the order of retraction that Bill uh, defined uh, uh, yesterday. So this is 
we we still don't have this uh, proof yet, but this is what we expect that is, we are getting this order retraction. Uh, it is preserving uh, when you are adding more points and you will have this convergence. This is what we expect, but uh, we don't have, still have that. So we have a lot of op open uh, questions here. Uh, okay, now adding more points. Uh, you you can see the you can see cre creation of more recurrence and sets and yeah. So after uh, here is uh, eighteen points, something like that. You you can see that you can see that you you are getting really close to the to the correct answer like to the true map uh, of course you have some uncertainty uh happening here on the boundary uh this is happening because when you are in the boundary you the uncertainty uh uncertainty is higher uh on the boundary because you you don't have more points like to 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 decrease the uncertainty so usually the uncertainty in the boundary is higher uh, one of the reasons why we, uh, with this amount of points, you are not getting the the repeller here, this tiny repeller here. Okay, but if you keep adding points, eventually you are going to converge here. Okay, so uh, something that uh, another uh, open question that we are trying to uh, solve here, it is. Okay, I was adding points here, but is there a smart way to start to add points so that you can converge to the Morse graph faster? So uh, this is something that we are trying to understand because uh, you can see that uh, one extra point here, uh, you broke this huge Morse set here in, in three. So this point was uh, important to add. And why? Well, we, this is something that we are investi investigating, but this is something that we can retrieve from the, from the, from this, uh, or the retraction that we are having from the, uh, from the previous case. So, this is something that we are yeah, investigating, so we, we don't have the answer yet for that. But it's, it is interesting uh, because with a few points, you are getting this, uh, these dynamics here. Okay. Okay. So now that we have that, uh, let's apply this for the, for the Acrobat case. Okay. So the, the Acrobat case, again, we have this, uh, this is the, the equation uh, for the acrobat case, uh, where he use the torque. Here I have the theta one, theta two, uh, and the velocities. And the torque here is going, all of them is bounded. Uh, the velocity is bounded. This is important. Uh, we are going to see this happening uh, in the data. Uh, and uh, the torque also is going to be bounded. Okay, so you can, can I make sure that I understand that the vector u has only one non-zero component at the elbow? There's no component of u at the shoulder. Is that am I getting that right? The shoulder. That's a two by one vector u on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah, yes, only, yes, yes. It's only it's only got a, a, the the second component is uh, is not zero. Yes, yes, yeah. Do you have vector here and here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the goal we start here at zero, and the goal is to go. Uh, Oh, it should be yeah, there is, maybe this one here. Pi. No, it's correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, pi zero zero zero. Okay. So that that's the goal. Okay. So you yeah. So how to to get that? So one approach you use uh, LQR. Basically, basically you are going to linear linearize and uh, locally the flow and the, the LD. And then you, you have to, uh, there is a cost function because you need to find the, the control uh, 
view. So you need to, you have this cost, of, uh, cost function and you, uh, you have to minimize, minimize this. Uh, and the minimization is going to give the, the controller for the, for the, that uh, locally is going to give you the, the controller. And then you apply that, uh, that controller to your linearization and then you, <clears throat> uh, let me show you a bit. And then you, after uh, you apply that and then you, uh, for each point, you basically, it, this is really important because for each point, uh, locally you are li linearized, uh, you get the, this U that is the, that is minimization of this equation here. Uh, and, and this, this is happening for each point, you minimize that. So this control, it is, this depends on the position. It depends on state step pace. So the position and the, the vectors, but depends uh, continually. So here we, we have a, uh, uh, the solution for this, this system is, is a continuous function, okay? Okay, so here is uh, an example that uh, is happening here. So this is, uh, this is for the torque uh, minus seven to seven. And here is for high torque. Uh, so uh, when you use a high torque, imagine like the torque is, it is putting energy to the system. So you can fight the, the, the gravity. So basically, if you are able to put more energy to the system, you are able to get uh, faster to the goal, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to treat that, uh, this yellow QR uh, as, as a black box, and I'm going to do some sample here. Be because I'm going, uh, why the, why I'm uh, uh, using this as a black box because LQR you have to integrate and minimize that. So it, it takes some time if you want to do this globally. Okay, so for the whole state space. Uh, and since we, we want to understand the global dynamics, so the fastest way to do that is, is use some data coming from the LQR and then build, build this surrogate model. Okay, using the Gaussian process. So here I have the, the data from uh, 30 path. So the data from uh, 30 path and here. So basically here's the theta one and theta two. Uh, I'm using the initial points are the red dots and the end points are the axis. Uh, here you have around uh, 3000 points. And the time step, it is 0 0.1 seconds. So after 0 0.1 seconds, uh, take the initial condition. After 0 0.1 seconds, you have the end point here. Okay. Okay. Using this data, uh, we can fit, uh, uh, use the Gaussian process to get the prediction. Here I have the prediction. Here I'm just showing the, the theta 1 and theta 2, but this is uh, doing it for D uh, using all the variables. Uh, here I have the prediction, and then using this prediction, I can build my, uh, I can compute the Morse graph, okay? So here's the Morse graph. Uh, you have recurrence here. Basically, this recurrence is happening because you, uh, when you are zero, zero, you need more time to, because you are, putting energy into the system. So it's going to take more time to go out from zero, zero. So that's why you, you have this uh, huge recurrence set here. Uh, then you have this, this another recurrence here that we did not expect. Uh, and I'm going to explain why this is happening. And then here you have the, the, uh, uh, the goal. The goal it is inside of the, that region that is our uh, a tractor. So this is interesting because uh, this is a 4D uh, dimensional system. 
and I'm using like 3000 points feeding this, uh, uh, using this data to using the Gaussian process to get a prediction and use this prediction to, to compute the, the Morse graph. Okay. And for that, we already getting this, uh, the goal here. So the, the attractor, what we expect is actually happening. So um, this is the attractor of the system. And this is what we expected from the from this data. Okay, so the yeah, the prediction is doing a, a good job here. However, we have this something in here is happening. Okay, so we decide to investigate that. Uh, yeah, here's just saying the dynamics of the is suitable. So the global dynamics is suitable. Uh, but we also we are interested in to understand what's happening here. Uh, because we have this recurrence here, and this we do not expect. Maybe it's just uh, because we need to do more subdivision uh, that recurrence might disappear. But some using some data, like doing more analysis here, uh, applying the time step ten seconds. So give the LQR ten seconds to to get the to get the initial point to the goal we see that some data are actually accumulating here so this is uh well so it's if the data is accumulating here so we might have a set of something like that recurrence happening here for the theta's one theta two okay so uh using the using the LQR uh as my map now, instead of using the, the Gaussian process, this is the, the more set that we get, and we are still getting the recurrence. And this is, in order to get this, it takes some time because uh, here I'm using the LQR. I'm not putting a surrogate model. So use LQR for the, all the uh, state space. And for, for each, uh box for the your grid you need to to see the you need to compute the image of that basically for the box you are doing you you need to compute the image of that so you are doing a lot of integration here okay so this this take too long to compute but good that is for these it is still possible to compute that but if if you go for a high dimensional system this might take forever to compute the without using this uh, surrogate model using just the this algorithm. Uh, it's it might take forever to compute this. Okay, so well, we we want to uh, check uh, if the surrogate model was the information from the surrogate model is it it, it is make sense, and then taking a point here of this of this more set we what we see here is the uh, trajectory of this point this point start here and then you can see then you can see uh the point start here and then jump to here this jump is continuous because uh this is a this is a angle so basically you are since this is going to be a toro so this this point here is near to this point here so you are seeing some jumps here, but uh, this is actually a torus. So they are they are staying here. Uh, and pi, okay, close to pi. And the velocity, it is you go to six, but you are bounded. You, your velocity is bounded by six. Your system has this bound to the velocity. So basically, you you go here, and then you have this bound to the velocity, and then you. Then you go from six, then go to minus six, and you keep doing this, this oscillator. So this is basically the trajectory from this point here. And it is like after 10 seconds, it is still there. So you, we found a place where there is no convergence, uh, is not going to the goal. So basically using the surrogate model, we will, we was able to find that, but we want to be 100% uh, sure that actually we were doing a, 
good job. The circuit was doing a good job. So we did also this for the using the LPR as a function and we found this happening. Okay, now how to solve this problem? Uh, the way to solve this problem is, well, uh, if you increase uh, the, the integration step, we were doing this for 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, we, for that, we, we didn't get the, yeah, the, the acrobat was getting stuck in that region. But if you increase the, inter, uh, the integrity step, or if you change the bounds on the velocity, then you are able to, to yeah, when you get here to this point, then you are able to, to move there from the, from the, to the goal. Okay, so this is something that we found that how to solve the problem. And that was one of way to solve the problem. Okay, so uh, then because of that, uh, we saw some, uh, so some points is getting stuck here. Uh, we decide to, to check what happened if you did change the torque because, okay, what happened if you increase the torque if you are able also to go out from this point, okay? Uh, the previous point, uh, the region that we, 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 we had the rec recurrence. Okay, uh, let, let me speed up a little bit here. Okay, so- I have a, uh, four minutes, all right? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so we, ha we have the torque here. So we have this, we have the bounds of the torque. Here, if you put, uh, uh, if your torque is too low, then you, you are not able to go to the goal. So you don't find this attractor uh, that includes the goal. But if you start to increase the torque, uh, you start to getting something interesting. You start getting a bifurcation happening. So basically increase the torque, then you see uh, the Mars graph, something like that. And then if you increase even more, you see something like that happening. Uh, then you see the, the attractor happening. And this also is related to the time step because if you, if you increase the time step, you are able to go to the, with a small torque, not small, but something between 14 and 20, you are able to, to go to the, the goal is going to be only, only the attractor, only the recurrent path, path, uh, set that you have. But if you if you have a is smaller torque, then you might get something stuck uh, here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so we can we can have this bifurcation diagram of these these global dynamics, and also something that we we want to investigate. It is the chaotic behavior of this environment set when you are going from this low torque to higher torque. So we, we saw some, uh, some experiments uh, with a low torque. It's it, the, the initial condition is really uh, sensitive. So to the initial condition, so we expect to have some uh, chaotic environment sets here happening. Okay, okay. So now that we, we have this analysis of the LQR, we want to understand, uh, we want to uh, put some uh, obstacles here for the, for the Acrobat. Here I have four obstacles and, and how to, to get to the goal, avoiding the obstacles. There is this uh, motion planning, basically, basically you, you have this. Uh, you have this huge tree, uh, where you select the the the, the control uh, for each point, and then you are, and then you you have this huge tree. When you have the when you have a trajectory that is hitting the the obstacle, then that that path that you are taking is not good. So. You have to explore your, your state space 
building this huge uh, tree of uh, controllers. And then you, uh, and then you, when you get to the goal after when this trajectory uh, gets to the goal by select these these controllers, then then you use that as as your trajectory, and then you have this collection of uh, controllers to get to the trajectory. Okay, so this is basically the motion planning. Uh, it takes too long, like because since you have to expand this huge tree. Uh, take too long to to find this trajectory, and also you get there. There is no guarantee that you are going to you are going to have stabilization because okay, I I was able to get close to the goal, but are you going to stabilize there? So uh, we decide to use the LQR here to to guarantee the stabilization because LQR is faster than the the motion planning to get the stabilization. But there is some issue because the LQR, uh, when you get close to the goal, you, you might, uh, what, what it's possible to happen, that the, the LQR is, it, you might, when you apply the LQR, you might hit some obstacles. Okay, so you you don't like this point here. Do you don't guarantee the stabilization for this point without hitting an obstacle? Okay, so then what what we do here is to to everything, analyze everything. Uh, your time is up. Can you summarize real quick? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we. We try to find the the attractor region for the LQR uh, near to the goal. And uh, here we we have this attractor here region. We we see that this is, uh, uh, has this trapezoid shape. Here you have the initial points and the end points. Uh, here you you get this attractor region, and for this attractor region, uh, uh, for the time step 0 0.3 seconds, you get this attractor region and this uh, you don't hit the, we, we did some computation for this attractor region, you're with 0 0.3 seconds, you are not hitting the, the obstacles. And, but this attractor region is small. So we want to, to increase that. That's the, the next step here is to increase this, this attractor region. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your attention. And thank you very much for all my collaborators here. Thank you, Everton. Uh, questions, comments? Dan. My impression is that mo most of the effort has gone into um, uh, effective uh, uh, analyses of existing dynamics. I'm wondering if you've thought about whether you're interested in taking a compositional approach now that you have the ability to detect pretty robustly, well, we hope pretty robustly, uh, um, uh, basins, in, in roughly speaking basins, and certainly uh, boundary markers, you know, saddles, the various description around those basins. I wonder if it would be interesting, if you're interested in beginning to take um, it, like a, a, a compositional approach where you would start thinking about constructing uh, controls uh, by, you, you, uh, for example, Matt showed you the uh, funnels, you know, one funnel leading yes. into another funnel, sequential compositions, those kinds of things. Is that, is it interesting to, to try to use these methods toward that sort of a, a construction? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we, this is our next step also, like, uh, we found this attractor region, then we want to construct those funnels. Yeah, this. Because the saddles, you know, we, we, we're, we're kind of good at constructing things with basins. We're not, we're not clever about using saddles of various, you know, index. And I think, you know, Yuli and I have talked about the perplexity of saddles from time to time. And saddles, you know, they, they are almost attractors for, for if the index is, you know, is low enough. They're almost attractors. And uh, you might be able to develop, since you see, you know, since you have this artillery for finding 
indices as well as finding basins of uh, of uh, low you know low points that could be that could be very interesting it seems to me could be yeah. very effective yeah yes i agree it's very interesting <laughs> yeah i mean in Not some everyone. sense that's that's exactly where we're starting now with the motion planner plus lqr right yeah that, that, that very last that i rushed everton through i mean that that is really kind of the direction we're going yeah. So it would and be it'd cool be to get a program, programming language. And, and, you know, we've been thinking a lot about programming languages for, for snippets of, of dynamical systems. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I think would be interesting, Dan, is to try to put it together both, in both computationally, which is what Everton's trying to do, right? Plus also what, you know, what Bill has been, Bill talked about, right? I mean, it would be nice to, to be able to both be in the woods like like Everton is, but at the same time to be thinking about what is this this Morse tiling that is kind of you know the, the the funnels in some sense are are you know things feeding in, and if the funnels don't quite match together, that's because there's a tile in there, right? And and so if we could do both simultaneously somehow, that would be I think. That would be cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah, seems like a, a good program. Yeah. Uh, other questions or comments? All right. Why don't we? We're, we're slowly moving the clock down, but let, let's try to start at three twenty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Or two twenty. Two twenty. Two twenty. We haven't gotten that too far off schedule. <laughs> All right. Two twenty. Thanks, everything. <laughs>